Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic, and we're talking about Peter Obi and the Labour Party. Now, this says Obi denies plans to leave Labour Party in reply to NLC. Joining me to have a conversation is Biodun Shoumi, is a political analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So there's been uh, some crisis in the Labour Party now. Um, we saw that the NLC has accused um, the leader of the Labour Party, um, the Julius Aburi, of running the affairs as a sole proprietor. And in fact, there was a vote of confidence, a um, vote of no confidence that was passed and asked for his resignation. However, that hasn't happened, and then there's just been a little bit of ruckus with the Labour Party. Now, some people have come out to say that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party might move to SDP for um, his political ambition to become president in the 2027 mm -hmm. election. But Peter Obi has come out to say that, no, he is not leaving the Labour Party. But I just want to get your take before we dive in on, you know, all the happenings, the recent happenings, and with Peter, Peter Obi's response to the NLC. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> what is not, um, cannot be disputed, is the Labour Party was midwifed by the NLC. Mm. And then that led to a litigation which they ended up with a consent judgment, um, affirming the fact that the Labour Party more or less um, is the parent body. The NLC is the parent body of the Labour Party, that is, the owner of the Labour Party. But in real sense, that is also presents another problem, which is the issue of freedom of association. Mm -hmm. That there are so many people who have associated with Labour Party who are not members of um, NLC in, or TUC in any form. So therefore, um, the Labour Party is a broad-based umbrella. That's the position, the viewpoint of the, uh, the of um, uh, Aburi's um, leadership. Unlike the position of the NLC, which says, "Look, we call the shots here." Now, what has led to the present crisis is the idea that um, is about the control of the party. We have people with different ideological bends within the Labour Party. In the first instance, the NLC that midwived Labour Party, you know, would love to see it as a mass-based approach party, providing mass-based solutions, you know, in the interest of the working class. Whereas many of those who moved in at a later stage, particularly before the last election, were people who did not necessarily share the ideological bent of NLC. So therefore, the party presented even policies which NLC found itself now to be opposing. For instance, the issue of removal of subsidy, uh, that was against um, what the NLC stood for, the issue of commercialization and privatization of public enterprises. Uh, NLC is strictly against it. The issue of um, uh, the margin of the, the, the floating of the Naira, NLC is strictly against it. But then, these were also the policies sold by their own presidential candidates, uh, the presidential candidates of the Labour Party, which they endorsed at that time or they were complicit, or they kept quiet about. So that has now manifested itself in terms of the struggle to control the party. What the NLC, what the Labour Party agreed with the NLC is that there will be what Congresses, local government Congresses, state before the national um, 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 uh, national convention, where the national national leadership is selected. The Abure faction realized that this will not necessarily be in their own interest, since um, the NLC is likely going to dominate at the world level, state le local government level, and state level. So they decided to already go ahead, you know, and do the national convention before, you know, doing the local government world and state elections. And that is the cross of the problem here. It's about the control of the party organs at the state level, world level, local government level, and at the national level. So, um, talking about the convention, you know, there were reports that there were no representatives of the state level, the local government level, the national level, and then the, the, the convention was just more like a, like a sham. 
whereby Abure was just trying to, you know, get his own um, vote in. What do you think about that? Is it, if they're having, you know, a national convention, is it not supposed to be for everyone, all um, members of the party, stakeholders involved? Should it just be for some select few people just because they want to, um, you know, just get that vote in? Yes, what, what they've done, um, what Abure did, uh, which I disagree with, is the idea that members of the party will not have any say right from the world level uh, to the present uh, to the national level. What they've simply done is they played the anxiety, the fear anxiety, you know, amongst the state um, leadership to say that, look, this, you guys will be replaced, you know, by people favored by NLC. So because they have the majority of the, uh, the voting population, you know, at certain levels. So they decided that, look, why don't you endorse us to continue? And that's exactly what the chairman of the state chapters did, which forced the NLC now to order that those state chapters offices should be taken over. Um, and they agreed because it's self-preservation, which is the rule uh, applied by the Aburi-led leadership, uh, including at the state level. So having done that, the NLC now decided to resist it. And uh, that is why what led to where we are today. So what they have done that they call the national convention will not be recognized. The 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 um, the INEC mm -hmm. refused to attend it, and also uh, not only because they changed the venue one time or the other, but simply because um, uh, they have not held all the necessary congresses that should lead to the national convention. So in this case, I think Abure uh, is wrong. It's about self-preservation, wanting to remain after the end of his tenure without any proper democratic endorsement beyond assembling the yes men to come and say yes you can continue in office and mm -hmm. in return the state chapters also will be allowed to continue in office so that that is not internal party democracy that is subverting internal party democracy in a mm -hmm. way that does not lead to a crisis within the Labour party i just think that all of this could have been you know avoided if you know aburi did what was necessary and then obviously the um, other party members also just pulled their weight as well. But there was something that you mentioned, which was talking about policies and saying, you know, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, you know, talked about floating the Naira, subsidization, um, removing the fuel subsidy and, and all of that. Should we have a political party whereby the presidential candidate doesn't even believe in um, maybe, or rather the NLC, for instance, doesn't believe in certain policies of the presidential candidate? Isn't that, you know, going against each other? Is, that, is, the, is it yeah. supposed to work that way? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You are correct. The problem we have is our parties are not ideological based. Mm. The closest to any ideological party in Nigeria today is the Labour Party. Again, when the opportunity presented itself, the NLC decided to be opportunistic. OB is a phenomenon. No doubt about that. Nobody can deny that. He has his own ardent followership called obedience. And they moved into the party with him. Mm. And the Labour Party benefited from that because we can see, you know, the result, going through the results, you know, for a Labour Party to achieve what they have achieved so far to the extent of even controlling a state mm -hmm. led by Alex Oti and then having representations at national level, they have done so very well. Mm -hmm. But you cannot take away the influence of Obi from that. He mm -hmm. played a role, he attracted attention to the party, and they have done very, very well. And I'm sure Obi himself is not happy about what is going on within the Labour Party currently because totally avoidable, you know, problem is what mm -hmm. Aburi has presented, you know, to the party. And therefore, uh, one is not sure what will happen uh, subsequently later. It depends on how these issues are resolved. The idea that Obi would not leave the Labour Party, for me, is only uh, saying that currently with a view to see whether they can resolve all their problems. If they are unable to resolve the problem and Obi is faced with ideological opposition within the Labour Party itself, you know, the NLC is fighting for the soul of the Labour Party, while also Obi uh, is trying to remain within the Labour Party and build the party uh, for the next election, if they can't find uh, a way out of this, uh, eventually they will have to part ways. And mm -hmm. that is the major problem. And one of the solutions to it is for Abure to leave.
is it that Abure will have to leave or agree that they should conduct the local government elections, ward elections and state elections, and a new national convention that will be attended, you know, by INEC? Because it is actually the state uh, elections that should produce the delegates, you know, for national convention. That is not what Abure, Abure, Abure did. He simply got the existing officials, who in any case will be the beneficiary of what is going also, you know, to, to, to come and endorse him to continue in office. Mm. Well, I mean, like you said, avoidable um, problem has just been presented. Now, Peter Obi has come out to say in his words, he says there is no such thing um, that is moving to another party. And he says, I'm for peace. I like peace. I believe we're one people. Our concentration should be on peace. And I believe that we will resolve all situations. Now, talking about resolving all situations, do you think there might just be a chance um, that the crisis in the Labour Party would be resolved where all parties, you know, would be happy and not feel, you know, stifled, if I can use that word, or um, arm twisted into doing what they don't want. Maybe Julius Abure doesn't want to leave, or the NLC is saying you have to. Can we, or rather, can the Labour Party get to that place of resolution where all parties involved, you know, would just be happy with each other and have peace, like Peter Obia said? Yes, in the first instance, we should not forget one thing, you know, that Obi said he will not leave the Labour Party. Yeah. If you go back into history, you have little or nothing to support that. Obi was in Abga. He vowed never to leave Abga, but he ended up in PDP, from PDP to Labour Party. So there is no evidence to suggest that Obi will stay in Labour Party with the crisis, mm -hmm. you know, ongoing in Labour Party. That's what be said. Now, in terms of resolution of the problems within the Labour Party, I don't think Obi will leave if those problems are resolved. Now, there are two major issues. One is the control of the party, which the NLC is fighting to and nail um, about to say that, look, we must conduct elections right from world level um, down to national level. Um, whether that would uh, be acceptable to Abure after the Sham National Convention, I don't know. Because I know that Abure since, has since gone to court. And what the problem now is uh, to even to even try and resolve it, you know, one way or the other, will not present a new problem. Because there are some other cases in court also, uh, the Arabambi faction and all that. Some of them have been resolved, some have not. Now, in terms of uh, the other challenge, which is the ideological one, in terms of the orientation of the Labour Party and its programs, they are supposed to be mass-based approach. That is, they are supposed to be a welfareist party. Obi is not, does not necessarily share that vision. And that is where the major problem is. I, it's not just about the control of the party. It's the direction in which the NLC would love to see Labour Party headed. That is, it should be a pro-working uh, class party, you know, coming up with mass-based approach to solve problems rather than, you know, a capitalist um, solutions. You know, to, to problems. So there's a kind of ideological conflict somewhere there. So whether that uh, uh, will be resolved or not, I don't know. Because for me, it seems it's a, it's, it's a party of strange bedfellows. You cannot have the NLC midwifing a political party, and then you now end up, you know, having Obi, who in any case will stand in opposition to the, to the ideological orientation of NLC, you know, being the presidential candidate. They tolerated each other before the last election simply because of the need, you know, to grab uh, power, to, to, to get elected. And the Labour Party, I know that, has benefited enormously from Obi's influence mm. within that party. Also, the NLC's influence within that party. So the issue is to find an amicable resolution. You know, one, the power issue can easily be resolved, but what about the ideological issue? Because Peter Obi and his obedient movement, you know, share a different ideological perspective to the NLC's ideological perspective. That is where I think the major problem will lie. Speaking about ideological perspectives, perspect oh, excuse me, perspectives, perspectives, right? That was just a tongue twister. So, I mean, if you look at other nations, for instance, the um, United States of America, you see that they have Republicans, they have Democrats. 
And, you know, those parties are, you know, geared towards certain ideologies, certain policies. This is what they believe in. So if you're joining such party, you definitely know that um, my ideology, I'm joining this because we are in tandem. You know, our ideologies are together. They are aligned. But why do we have, you know, political parties first a lot in Nigeria? And then the ones that you can just go there just because I can. So you can see someone moving from PDP, for, for instance. In fact, just in River State, a lot of about 27 members of the, of the House of Assembly, you know, had moved from PDP, right? So they can just decamp regardless of what their ideologies are. Shouldn't we start to look at ideological based parties instead of just forming parties just for the name of it? Absolutely. I completely agree with you. I think the last attempt to have an ideological party in Nigeria, ideologically based parties in Nigeria, was when, um, uh, uh, I think it's IBD, uh, when uh, they formed two political parties, or is it Abasha, one to the, a little to the left, a little to the right. I think it's Abasha, the, when he wanted to transmute uh, himself. Mm -hmm. um, you have the National Republican Convention, and the, no, it's um, IBB, and then the SDP, Social Democratic Party. So that was the last attempt to have ideological based political parties in Nigeria. But in terms of um, how our parties have evolved um, currently, uh, we found ourselves in a situation where most, if not all, the parties lack any ideological focus or orientation. So consequently, that has led to what or the promotion of what is called political prostitution. That mm. is, you can sleep, you know, in PDP in the morning, you know, get up and have your lunch in APC, and then you have your dinner in Labour Party in the night, only to wake up in the morning in Shoures Party. You know, that is what we have currently. And that is what is called, you know, uh, political prostitution. So it's convenient for Nigerian ruling class simply because they are able to hedge their bets. Many of those parties were actually formed by them using their cronies. So if they disagree with their own political party on choice of who or representation, they can easily move to another political party and then, you know, represent themselves, you know, for re-election. So that is why they've been doing that. It's about um, uh, political prostitution and it's about um, uh, wanting to hold on to power. That is what we have currently going on. When you look at people like Apabio, where was Apabio? Apabio was a PDP governor. Where did he end up? He's now the Senate president in APC. And he's not the only one. There are so many people like that. You remember the issue of um, Saraki and others, you know, the Saraki and his group of five people. Um, when they left the PDP, they formed a new party called the PDP and then ended up in alliance with APC. So it's lack of principles mm. on the part of our political leaders, lack of ideological orientation in our political parties that has created a situation where political prostitution tribes and of course it only suits the interest of politicians but not necessarily you know the interest of nigerians mm. so what's the way forward now for um the labor party and you know the issues with the nlc as we wrap up the the the, the way forward is very clear the issue of power is easily resolved um i'm sure Abu, um, um, Aburi would um, eventually agree that they should have all the world uh, local government and state congresses. Mm -hmm. That can easily be resolved through that, and then they can ease out Ab Aburi. But that will not end the problem. That will only solve the problem for the time being. But the issue of um, ideology, it's the, it, it will be the major problem. Mm -hmm. Those who think they own the Labour Party, particularly the NLC, would want to influence the perspective of whoever, or would prefer somebody who shares their perspective to be the next presidential candidate. I cannot see you be being the next presidential candidate of Labour Party. Once the chips are down, uh, I'm sure Obi will decide to move somewhere else. Um, not necessarily because he doesn't want to lead the Labour Party, but strictly because of the ideological. Uh, divide within the Labour Party. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the next one year, we'll see how these things will evolve. But the more likely thing is that Opi will eventually, you know, leave the feel frustrated and leave the Labour Party. If it continues this way. 
All right. So um, we want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely having a conversation with you um, regarding the, the issues with the Labour Party and the NLC and where Peter Obi stands as well. We want to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. All right, we've been speaking with Biodun Shawomi, the political analyst, and we've just been talking about Peter Obi's response to the NLC saying he's not leaving Labour Party. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. This talks about autism in Nigeria. Please stay with us. <laughs>